benefits from having the artist present in the meeting. Yay. Uh, all right. Um, before we start, I want to introduce a special guest today. We have the artist Tom Fruin joining our meeting from his fabulous fireplace, fireside chat location. Nina knew it. She knew it. She just knew it, Tom. <laughs> yeah, she found out. She, we blew our cover. <laughs> oh, wait, I can see the chat, too. Yeah. <laughs> this is so exciting. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for joining us. Um, Nina, would you mind? And listen, I, one of the things I want to I wanna really impress upon everyone is that this is a super uh, informal, low pressure, not, um, not nerve wracking thing. Uh, the main purpose of these contemporary artist intensives is to share with each other examples of artists who are living and working among us. Um, Tom has been a friend and neighbor of mine for several years. And it is just so cool to be in a city where all these things are going on. And you guys share this city with us as well. So uh, um, it's going to be really cool to kind of see this interaction. And what I want to, to really say is that this is, this is a conversation. What I am asking you guys to do for your contemporary artist presentations is just to show us some work and talk about it. And if you guys want to chime in and say, hey, that's really cool, or hey, I have a question about this, please feel free to do that in the chat or out loud or uh, anything of that, um, of that type. And also, today we're really lucky because we're also going to get to hear from Tom himself. And he's going to get to kind of chime in and be like, by the way, and give us a bunch of information. And you guys can ask him questions, too, because it is not every day that you get to meet an artist, especially one whose work has such visibility in our own city. Right. So I think that's really great. Nina, um, I'm not going to prattle on for too long. Nina says, correct me if I'm wrong. So far, uh, there is nothing to correct and you will not have to worry about it. Yeah. See what Tom said? No worries at all. Um, so the uh, the artist that I researched about is called Tom Fruin. Um, next slide. Um, he was born in Los Angeles in 1974, and he graduated from with a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the University of Santa Barbara in um, 1996. Um, he is known for a large scale art and that is sustainable and can use in the public. Um, uh, the water characters series is his uh, most proudest artwork that he created. Um, uh, the, this includes the first water tower in double because it's seen in um, many pe people daily. Um, he started making art because of garbage uh, he saw first saw in New York when he came from NYC. Next slide. Um, the first one, uh, I don't think it's like out yet, but like um, I saw it in the the studio. Uh, uh, this is called All Out of Delhi, like um, made in twenty twenty. Uh, the latest one I found is uh, Bushwick Houses in two thousand one. Um, it is like made out like found drop bags and thread. Um, next one. Quick question, are we taking a walk down memory lane here? So like the Bushwick houses, did you say that was one of the earliest works of Tom's that you could find? Uh, yeah, because like other ones, um, uh, either doesn't have like the length or like certain like um, names or like it's like unknown. So this is like the only one that like has like the, uh, the size and like um, the name of the year. Tom, help us out, is this a super deep cut? Yeah, this is great. This is in depth. I mean, I like it from from the oldest one you could find to the stuff that, as you said, isn't even out yet. I was get, just before COVID hit. I was going to do a little show in the studio of found neon works that were recontextualized because they used to just throw that stuff out before, like everyone realized on eBay it actually has some value, or you know, it would get broken. The way neon works, it's in this. It's, it's in a series. So if you break like just the eye on Delhi. The whole sign goes out, but if I get it in my studio and I, I can separate all the different glass components 
and then wire them without the word deli. Like, you know, Bill, you know, so I, I took a bunch of bits of signage and put them together because I thought like the the all out village, you know, Beerland Deli was going to be like a hit, you know, kind of like just a really bombastic sign. It is bombastic. So what I'm wondering is we're seeing Bushwick houses from 2001, which is found drug bags and thread. How much what what came before this? What were what would if we had gone back five, ten years before this, what would we have seen? Uh, before that is just a lot of me walking around trying to figure out what I was going to do, uh, sort of like feeling very alone in this big city and, and just like trying to figure out what role I was going to play in it. Um, but really, you know, when I started seeing drug bags and trash for, for some weird reason, it felt like um, it was a connection that I had to other people. I'd look at stuff on the ground and be like, well, someone just threw that cigarette right there. And for some reason, it, it made me feel like. I knew what was going on. I wasn't so lost. And the more I went on these walks to see what was going on, I take like a subway line at the very end and I have a very good sense of direction. Also, I'm enormous and like, I don't look like I carry much money. So I, I didn't really worry about my safety, but I would get out of the subway line and then um, just wander trying to get lost. And I would pick up stuff that I found along the way, anything that was, you know, outstanding or seemed like it, it, indicated some kind of behavior and I'd almost make notes in my head. And when I get back to the studio, I'd spread them all out and then compose them into, uh, <laughs> here's another, the next generation of uh, artists is here. <laughs> this is Kat who just turned six. Oh, here we go. <laughs> um, but uh, sorry, <laughs> she's gone. But, uh, but then I would, you know, make these things and I was calling them, uh, you know, initially they were flags. And then, uh, I mean, initially they were quilts. Because I was doing this idea, I thought I'd take the the whole American connotation of a a quilt being a blanket, being a, a, a some sort of family protective warmth device, and a very American thing. And I thought I was going to be such a bad boy by like making it out of trash and drug bags and garbage. Uh, but what ended up happening was they were kind of pretty, you know. They were they were alluring. Uh, and then I I started to make a smaller series of flags that were not meant to be this overarching um, theme, but were meant to be specific to each neighborhood. And this one is, is just from, uh, from, from one uh, housing project in Bushwick. And I literally just ride my bike there and lock it up and get a coffee and wander around and, and pick these things out and put them in my back pocket and got a little bit harassed here and there. And people would always think like, oh, that's sad, that poor guy. You know, picking up garbage. <laughs> but, but then I'd go to the studio and I'd sew these together. And, and luckily, um, they were really popular. They sold at, at all the gallery shows. Nice. All right, Nina, let's continue um, with artworks. Uh, so these are like the artworks that are like uh, in middle Korea. Basically, uh, one of them is the cop uh, car. Uh, like, it's made of 2013. And it's made of plasma car. Um, I don't know what's it, but like it's something of steel and spray print. Uh, spray, uh, spray paint. I can't pronounce that. Um, the other one is called a flame in 2014. Um, it's found glass and lead, lead, lead. I can't pronounce. Uh, copper, steel, and light. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> Tom, is that based on the Statue of Liberty's flame? So it's actually a one to one scale copy of it. Um, here, here's the thing, like, so the first it, one, which is probably here, right? like the next slide or something, but the, the first uh, sort of what I'm calling this icon series that, that took the leap from the quilts and flags to being the public outdoor work. Uh, so it just used that patterning and the concept of salvage material to, to, um, to make something that it's meant to almost to be a celebration of all that variety and the humanity of the city. And the first one was in Copenhagen, and I made like sort of a typical garden shed. We came back to Brooklyn and my wife said, what would your icon be for New York? And I said, a water tower. So I did that. And then we decided maybe that's just the Brooklyn water tower. Hold on, wait, wait, you're getting ahead of Nina now. Oh yeah, that's the point, right? I can save her from it. <laughs> <laughs> Nina, you want to carry Nina. Tom this into what really, you're saying? This is really fun for me to see all, all the way you put this together. Nina, go ahead. Let's, let's, uh, let's help Tom to uh, remember what his career has looked like so far. Um, so the left one is called the windmill and made in 2017. It's like 40, 40 foot tall. It's um, made of sound steel and uh, plexiglass. Um, the right one is the water tower made in 2010. 
um, is made of uh, plexiglass, um, steel, and bolts. Uh, this is part of like the um, uh, you can say like um, the plexiglass, like very colorful art, um, made together. Uh, you can add on as like um. Oh well, I was just gonna say so that it, this actually is perfect to illustrate the point I was trying to make. So uh, we, you know, we created a series called the Icon Series, and so the the house was for Copenhagen, the water tower, what I thought was gonna be for New York. We decided, hey, let's just let's change our minds. Call that just the icon for Brooklyn. And my wife was like, well, what would be the New York icon? If do it done in your style. And I said, well, you know, it'd be cool to do the Statue of Liberty flame because that's so quintessentially New York, you know, immigrant experience. And then I was trying to think more globally, bigger. So all the glass from that was broken um, factory window glass from Detroit. So it's almost blowing it up like being the icon for all of America. Um, but that became sort of a, a, a benchmark of the of this series where it's meant to re respond to the, the locality where it's going to be shown. So the one, the windmill there, that, that's in Fort Worth, Texas. And the people there, it's actually a mall called Clearfork. And it was on a ranch. And the client called me up and said, look, I saw your water tower. We used to have a water tower. Maybe you want to make one. So I made a render. And he was said, wow, you know, we also had a barn. So then I made a render of a barn. He's like, you know what would be coolest if we could do the windmill we used to have? So then there's the windmill. Um, but that that is kind of the point. I keep thinking like maybe for L.A. I could do a billboard or for Detroit, I could do a smokestack. But that's the idea to make it very specific and iconic for where it goes. So these locations are really kind of like a muse for you. Which, uh, yeah, well, for, for, for a listening mean, audience, that means that that's a subject that he's really interested in. Sure. I mean, one thing I, I do, you know, I, I, I'm obviously, I don't know if it's still, the fire's still going, but I'm spending a lot of time in this cabin, so I've been doing different stuff with, like, logs, but um, I always like to think of the uh, billboards, or uh, sorry, the, 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 the water towers being on buildings so the buildings can almost function as a pedestal. Like, if that's the scale, you know, like, using the, the urban environment. Yeah, totally. Nina, do you want to you wanna keep us going here? Uh, how Tom Friedman makes his work. So he co collects unwanted scraps of metal, acrylics, light and hardware, uh, hardware from all um, unwanted de debris. Um, he welds um, hardware, laser cut steel, hand cut uh, found acrylic, paint light, and so it's like usable for like later, like in later in art. Um, uh, so basically, when I emailed him, he gave me like a, a story of like his like uh, inspiration. So I uh, summarized I mean that, it. Uh, so this is about like um, when he first came to NYC in 1996, he saw the like garbage everywhere and started collecting them. Uh, he wanted like these debris to into like make them into quilt, so he referred to bring warmth and sense of family. Um, these debris uh, turned out surprising like beautiful and fragile. It became a document of uh, the experience of him in certain places. Before he knew it, he was making more and more um, clothes and flags out of garbage from certain neighborhood. Uh, as time passes, these, um, these artwork of unwanted scrap um, turned like turned to a huge artwork as seen around the town. Uh, the town. So um, on the bottom right, there's like a link of his dirty workplace. I found it on the internet. It has like this is the artwork that like. Yeah, this is definitely the thing that'll crash your computer. All right, let's do it. Let's crash. <laughs> so, this is Tom's studio. Tom, this is in uh, kind of like Gowanus area, Park Slopey, yep. Gowanus. Is that right? Gowanus. Yep. Um, it's near Whole Foods, kind of. Uh, yes, pretty much near that. So, um, and then as we go in, too, a lot of the stuff is left. Um, the studio there, uh, the, so, this was in the early summer, uh, during COVID and, um, some of the pieces were meant to go to this lobby, uh, of the dime building, which is in Williamsburg. And I think when you go in a little further, you'll be able to see the table is covered with, a another, um, sort of progression of, of this garbage. If you look at that little table to your right, um, so that is, uh, that's all more garbage pieces. So you see a Marlboro box. There's some Budweiser cans and Coca-Cola. Um, I'm not sure if that does a link to anything better, but um, 
But that ended up being presented on a wall. And then if you turn around, there's another uh, garbage thing on this wall. So that's going to be basically it was trying to make a water tower pattern. That whole thing. Yeah, that direct, that horizontal. It was trying to make a pattern for a water tower that wasn't based in the sort of more geometric grid thing that was instead based in large, uh, you know, like trash sort of blown up to a more monumental scale. Um, just again, because it, 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 I thought it was going to be dirty and ugly, and, and it, it ended up being beautiful. The more I looked at it and saw the details, and uh, it, it was just something that I was attracted to. This says, Tom Fruin starter kit. Do you want to be just like Tom Fruin? How did you know that's what I wanted to do? <laughs> um, <clears throat> should I? I won't start now because we're in the middle of a meeting, but later I'm going to come back and become just like Tom Fruin. And uh, what, here, here, I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to post this link in the chat so that everybody can have it. And you can actually go up there's some stairs on the left hand side uh, in the back. You can go up those stairs to the sort of mezzanine area. Yeah, back there in that upper right corner. Um, and you can yeah go up there, and then there's uh, that's where Nina. Well, you can find like the neon sort of show I was putting together. Whoa. Uh, yeah, cool, right? <laughs> I I just love how it colors the space. Like, what does this look like in yeah, the dark, a right? There's skylight in that room. Yeah. If you look up, that is, uh, it's almost, a, if I was imagining how to repair a broken skylight, and that is, it's based on the one that actually blew off the building I was in in Dumbo during Sandy. Whoa. So that's, that's where the dimensions are from. That was the one, uh, yeah, that was the J Street building, where they, ha they still have one of your water towers on the roof. The first one's still there, yeah. Uh, fantastic. All right, Nina, let's uh, continue, if you don't mind. Why do you like his well, work, Nina? Um, basically, he uses colorful materials like plexiglass, uh, plexiglass um, paint, and different colored neon lights that make you feel cheerful. Uh, he he used like ma reused material that's eco-friendly to make artwork, so so it's better for the environment. Um, all his artwork is like unique, creative, and every single one has like um is is really interesting. Um, like basically, I I believe that it, it uh brings joy to like um everyone passing like for example like the Dumbo the water tower because it's like really colorful. So I believe it makes uh, like it brings joy to other people passing through. Um, so it may create a like happy environment. And that gloomy one, because no one wants to live in a gloomy and sad environment. <laughs> and that's why we choose New York. Okay, now, Nina, this is the part where you have to be really brave, and we are all going to give you a super big round of applause. Can I show Tom your original work uh, emulating his style? Okay. All right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this? Uh, this is, like, an artwork that I thought of, basically. Um, it's, like... The bottom is, is originally a pencil, but the bottom is like a pencil made of like plexiglass is really colorful. And the top is made of like a uh, glass, like like the one made of uh, the flame one. Um, the one, like it's like clearish, but like um, not that colorful. And like, so basically at night it lights up, so the people around it, so it can like see the way home. So it isn't so dark and scary. Um, like the bottom one, I thought of it because like, um, like basically we're in school, so I wish like everyone like um do their best on like tests or something. Um, yeah. So basically, at the at, in the morning, like the colorful part will be like the place that people see, and then at night, like the top is like a, originally a globe. So basically, like of the U United States. So it's uh it's like the since at night you can't see like the plexiglass because it's too dark, then the top of the globe is where you see. Fantastic. It's so positive. I love it. Um, that's really I great. I like the and angle, too. You can imagine, like, someone writing with it. It's just, it's it's a neat, it's neat that it's angled like that. Yeah. And I, I also really like the scale that you specified. This thing is huge. It's enormous. Oh, meters. Wow. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's really big. Uh, Nina, that's fantastic. 
Thank you so much, Nina. You did a great job. Uh, Tom, do you want to kind of share anything else? Do you feel like maybe there's some uh, little tidbits you want to slip in in between the information that we got? Um, you know, I was just, I was almost realizing in when she was highlighting the reused materials, that one cop car piece was all scraps from a water tower piece. Because huh. when they laser cut it out, they said, well, here's what we call the drop. Because usually when they cut it out, it literally drops. Right. And I said, of course I want that. So I welded them all back together and then spray painted on it and then plasma cut the shape out. Uh, and that turned out uh, pretty wild. Another thing with, with Nina's last final work, uh, I just thought I'd tell you guys, I, I, since I'm here in the cabin and not in the studio, I don't have any like uh, examples of my work. But one thing I've been doing is, you know, when you figure it out, you can just make a scale model and then tape it, you know, roll it and tape it. And it, it's kind of fun. You can have like little figures or something, but she could easily sort of draw that flattened, um, you know, and, and even the globe, you have different things and then print it out or, or just draw it at that scale and roll it. And you just have an instant little model. And, and this is, I'm actually working with a company to make a uh, commercially available um, like desk lamp. And, and so I've been playing with some patterns that would have like sort of distinctly uh, Fruin style patterns that wouldn't like bring you straight to thinking of Mondrian or other people that work with grids. Um, but this pattern is derived from the first one I made. I just went and measured it. And there's, there's some parts of it actually are from, the colors aren't exactly right, but the, the pattern is. But it's just, it's fun to like work at all these different scales because they're all, you know, they all end up in the same place somehow. I have to say, I hadn't put it together until I saw Nina's presentation of the um, kind of sequence of events, <laughs> how that quilting kind of fed directly into the, the larger scale works. Um, it was I a great them, presentation. I, I, hope you, I hope she gets rewarded with a really solid grade, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, one of these, <laughs> uh, for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know, like... Somehow, you know, you and I have been talking for years and it took me until today to make that connection between like the the kind of melded together fragments and those shapes that are in the water towers. It's not just pretty because it looks like Mondrian. It's it's really like a, a, a reunification, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, some of those water towers are literally scans of the smaller quilts. And I've just changed the scale because I feel like the less I do, the better it is. Right. The, the more I meddle, the more fussy things get. And the, they just don't seem as good as when they're natural the first time. So if I do that and then, you know, we'll be I need I need some help because they're bigger. And my assistant might be like, well, what color is that? And I say, well, let's go to the source material and say, see what color it was. And and that way I don't I'm not making any choices. It's just all a given from the the earliest materiality. It just it all it I just have to execute it. Absolutely, um, Tom. Thank you so much for joining us. We will be doing something at your studio soon. Uh, I love that. Either <clears throat> either uh, holding remote class from there, or we'll do a little video together and show it to the kids later. Um, <laughs> Nina, big props to you for uh, being brave and, and presenting under what might be one of the uh, larger amounts of pressure that you can find yourself in in this environment. Uh, you did great. And I hope that everybody enjoyed this. Before we let Tom go, let's give him a big round of applause uh, and also an even bigger round of applause for Nina. So uh, thank you, guys. And Tom, I'll be in touch with you. Thank you again. I'll see you around, dude. No doubt. Thank, thank you so much, Mr. Sohar. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Bye.